All right, one time someone came in and they said, hey, I want to start tying flies, but I just want to do simple flies like a prince nymph. Guess what? Prince nymph is not simple. It's hard to get it to look right. And I've been playing with it quite a bit. So guess what? We're just going to tie one. But stay and watch to the end of this video because I have a little trick with the wings that you've got to see. It's really makes for a clean fly. That's it. The Prince Nymph. Uh, it's an easy fly, they say. Just go tie it. No big deal. Actually, this one's kind of a pain in the butt, but it's such a good fly. There's something about peacock curl that just works really well. So we're going to give it our best shot. Um, now I, I, I have some tricks that hopefully will help you tie better Prince Nymphs. But first things first, we have a 3769 from TMCO and the Vice, just a standard nymph hook. Um, you can use whatever hook you want for this. That's just kind of the hook that was closest on the desk. It's a great hook. It pokes fish really well. And I've got a four millimeter bead on it on a size 10. So you can just go up or down from there on your Prince nymphs. And I am going to start out by attaching some lead wire. This is 020 and I don't know, seven or eight, nine wraps. I don't know. Do you do math, Spencer? Nope. Neither do I. All right. So. Just going to use my fingernail to smooth out the back of that lead and then just jam it forward into the bead. And that will keep that bead nice and centered while we tie this fly. I'll start my thread right at the back of the lead and just lightly cover it up a little bit. doesn't matter if it's covered all the way. And we're going to tie in some tails. So I'm going to use brown goose biots for the tails. All right, so I'm going to take two biots and I'm going to lay them back to back with each other. Let's see if I can get it. This is, this is the hardest part of tying this fly. Just lining up these dumb tails. All right, so when I hold those, you can see that they splay away from each other. So right at the tie-in point, I'm going to just lay those in here. One's going to be on one side of the hook, one on the other. Get them about the right length and then just kind of pinch them and come up with your thread and make a real nice tight wrap and then you have Prince Nymph tails just like that. That takes a little bit of practice so don't be mad if they don't look good the first time. Okay so once we have that tied in we're gonna throw some gold wire in here. Now whatever you rib your Prince Nymph with there are a bunch of different things you can do. I'm just going with like some really thick gold wire it's 0.3 millimeter so that's some gnarly stuff I'm gonna stick it in right here right where my lead finishes and wrap it back to the start of the tails the reason I do that is because if I put it over the lead it, it creates a little bit of bulk um, so I don't like to do that I'm just gonna use my thread to build up a little bit of a body I just kinda wanna smooth off the the lead here. Um, with, with peacock curl you kind of want to shape the body underneath before you wrap that in. So that looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be completely smooth like a copper john. But here's my peacock eye. I'm gonna peel off about four fibers from right here right before the the eye really gets going. see that's one two three four has to be exactly four it won't work just kidding people I don't come in here and say I tied them with five and they worked I, that was a joke that was not serious but we will have people come in and ask all right so I just line up the tips and I trim the tips off so it's nice and flat and I'm going to tie those in kind of right at that back taper of that body and then take my thread all the way forward. At this point, I'm going to take some liquid courage, aka super glue, and I will throw that down on the body. It just adds a little bit of durability. And then I'll take my peacock curl and wrap that back to front. And you can see it's really poofy. That's fine. Because once we put our uh, 
our wire through it, it will tame it down a little bit. So there's our body for the prints. And I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to wrap that the opposite way that I wrapped the rest of the hurl. And when I tie this off, I, I don't want that wire tie in point to be right on top of the, the fly. I'm going to pull it down to the side if I can. And I just don't want the, the butt of that wire getting in the way when I tie the, the wing and hackle in. So the best way to do that is the, 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 the wire came over this way. I'm going to bend it after it's tied in, bend it right up against where it was without a ton of pressure. So I'm just kind of giving that the old 180 and then that creates a crease and I should be able to helicopter that right off. <laughs> a little more helicoptering than I want, but it worked. All right, from here we're going to throw some hackle on it. So I'll just choose whatever hackle you got. I've got this kind of furnacey looking hackle. I don't even know what color it is or where it came from, but just find a hen hackle and work with it. So I've got the, the hackle about like that. I'm going to trim off or pull off a bunch of the stuff till I get to the sweet spot. Okay, I'm just going to take that hackle and I'm going to tie it in right behind the bead. And then I'm just going to orient that hackle so it sweeps back as I wrap it. If I fold that hackle a little bit, it can help it sit how I want it to sit. And I'm all fingers right now, I get it. But I need to fold each turn of the hackle. Okay, about like that. So the, the base of the, the neck is quite a bit thicker than just the hook shank. So choose a hackle that's maybe one size smaller than you would think you'd need because it's going around such a thick diameter. All right, so we have some hackle in there. You can do CDC on this if you want, um, like in a loop. It looks really, really good. So that looks real bushy and ratty right now. So we're going to turn it into a Prince Nymph once and for all. So I'm going to take two uh, white biots, pull them off the stem, and I'm just going to lay those right on top of each other. So just like that, right on top of each other. And I'm just going to throw those right on here, and they're going to reach to the back of the body of the fly. So once I'm there, I'm just going to tie that in with a few real tight uh, turns of thread. You can see very minimal turns. And this is the part where um, I started playing with biots quite a bit. And this is a cool technique to help you have a real, a really uh, slim tie off or break off point on these wings. So I'm messing with the angle. That's probably too much. I'm going to bring them back in just a little bit. You can adjust those all around until you get them exactly how you want. But then I'm going to cinch down pretty tight on my thread and fold those back. And I'm just going to do one or maybe two turns of thread right at the base of that wing. You can see the little thread mark there. Now on these, if you can see that there's a translucent side of the biot and a, a thick side of the biot, if I just start by going like this on that translucent side, I can begin to rip that biot. Once I get it to tear, it will tear all the way along that thread line and create a really clean tie-off point. Do that with both sides. That thread slipped off of there. That's why. There. One, once my thread's in there, I can just grab those biots and they tear right off. So as you can see, that's a really clean tie-in point. This is a pretty shaggy one. Um, probably could have used a little bit smaller hackle, but at the end of the day, that thing's going to hunt and fish really, really nicely. Oh, that's what, it just wasn't wrapped around very well. 
All right, once I'm here, I just throw a little whip finish on here and we're good to go. So that's a, that's a pretty heavy Prince Nymph. Um, super uh, effective fly. Uh, 